Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I would like to talk about my experience with using the Contax TVS while taking photos of my suburban neighborhood here in Calgary, Alberta. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different from what I usually put up here in this channel because I wanted to do it as a point of view type of video where you get to see me as I go around and take photos, um, which I think could be cool. Um, however, rather than just giving you the point of view videos, I would also like to narrate what was going on in my head during the time so you get to hear my thoughts and other things that I would like to comment about, like say the camera or the composition and things like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it um, and so please stick around if you want to see that. So this was the first time that I was using the Contax DVS to take photos. So at this point in time during the video, I was basically just getting used to how to take photos and how to handle the cameras. Um, yeah, so it's not that hard to use, it's actually fairly easy because it's a point and shoot camera. However, every time that you get a new camera, it does take some time to get used to the controls and things like that. So yeah, here are some of the first shots that I've taken just in the back alley of my house. And like I said in my previous videos, um, Unlike when I am traveling or when I'm exploring a new city, um, going around my neighborhood in the suburbs is not as nice or it's not as interesting as say when I'm exploring a different city. Um, so during this time I was basically looking for anything that is interesting to me, let's like say for example in here um, I was looking at how the light was falling in this garage I guess um, and I thought that was cool so I took a photo of that. Um, so this was basically an exercise about seeing things differently um, and taking interest on mundane things because I think everything is actually mundane you just have to look at it at a different perspective or yeah. Okay so this red wagon I guess in here really caught my attention. I've already taken photos of it in the past but to the, like during that day when I was taking this photo the light was falling on it in a very nice way so I thought I'd take another photo of it. However rather than just taking one photo of it I decided to look back and look at it at different angles. Um, so every time I'm doing street photographies, I always like to kind of look back and see where I've been already um, because, you know, I guess sometimes when you look at things in a different angle, then you might see another composition that you might like to take. Um, so I always make a point to look back from where I've already come from and maybe I'll see a different composition that way. So I've probably already walked this alley thousands of times since 2007 when we moved here um, and this van has always got my attention. Um, it's always there, I don't even know if people still use it but I think it's always nice to see it so I just took a photo of it. Um, like the red wagon earlier, I have a lot of photos of this van already but might as well take another one, right? <laughs> And since it's the winter time, I also like to take some photos of textures um, that's juxtaposed against the snow, which I think is pretty cool. Here I was taking a photo of this house's door because I thought the light was falling on it really nicely, um, but I was trying to do it a little bit low-key because the owner was there and I didn't want to look suspicious. Um, but I guess that happens when you're going around the suburbs and taking photos of people's houses. It can get a little bit awkward, I guess. 
Now, I haven't had any problems with that. Um, nobody has like tried to shoo me away from their property. Um, however, if that does happen, then I guess I'll just politely do what they want. I mean, it's their property, right? Uh, here, I really like to see this kid um, on the swing. Um, so I took a couple of photos here, um, which I thought is pretty nice. And I guess I should have said this earlier, but I didn't. So um, I was using Kodak Portra 400 as my film stock when I was taking these photos, um, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, I really like how it renders blues. Um, like as you can see in here, it renders it more towards the teal colors uh, and it's quite natural. So one major difference of the Contax TVS and the other T-series Contax cameras is that it has a zoom lens that goes from about 28mm to about 55mm. And as you can see in here, it's not a lot. However, it does give you a little bit of reach. Um, for example, in here, when I was taking a photo of this fire truck, I zoomed in and I got this shot, which sometimes is pretty cool. At its widest end, the camera's maximum aperture is 3.5. And at its longest end, it maxes out to 6.3, which is a little bit dark, so I guess that's why a lot of people don't really like that. Um, also, because it's a zoom lens, then the sharpness is not the same as its prime lens counterparts. However, it is still a Carl Zeiss lens, which makes it a little bit better than other point-and-shoot cameras out there. And when I bought this camera, I thought that I would always be shooting using the 28mm wide end of it um, and stick to the 3.5 aperture however as you can see in here i was actually using the telephoto part of it um, a lot of times because it makes for a good composition oh and i really like this school bus um, mobile library that they have in here where you can leave books or borrow books from And when I was doing this photo walk, I wasn't just walking around aimlessly per se. I actually knew that I wanted to go and visit this playground over here because I thought it would be nice to take some photos of the empty playground. Here I was looking for a pop of color which I got from the red steering wheels of this toy car I guess. Um, but yeah, I also really like how the light was falling into these structures. So I walked towards the back of the building because th I knew that they had this basketball court um, which I thought would make for some good compositions. And as you can see in here, I really like how the brick wall and the green walls work together to make this composition. And of course, I took a photo of this basketball ring against the sky because I thought that looked nice. Um, and while I was doing that, I noticed that I can see the moon. So I took a photo of it. However, because the telephoto lens didn't have that much reach, uh, it's not really a nice photo. So here are some other shots that I've taken of this part of my neighborhood. And at this point, I only had a few shots left on the camera, so I decided to turn back and yeah. I didn't take any more 360 videos in here because I was getting tired, um, but yeah, I just took several more photos and basically went home. I did take photos of these cars that are covered by snow though because I thought there's something very Canadian about them. Um, and maybe give it 10 more years and these cars would be vintage and they would look nice. 
And last but not the least, I took a mirror selfie with a flash because there's not enough light. But yeah, that's pretty much everything. Yeah, so I guess that brings me to the end of that POV video, which I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, it's like different from what I usually put up, but I've been thinking of doing more of that in the future. So yeah, let me know your comments in the comment sections down below. Um, before I leave though, I would like to give a little bit of comment about this Contax TVS, which is the camera that I used throughout this video. Um, I actually really enjoyed using this camera. Uh, it is a little bit more on the expensive side, not as expensive as the Contax T2. However, it still was about, I think, $500 when I got it. Um, so yeah, the prices are steadily getting higher though. So I don't know, maybe if you want it, maybe now is the time to buy it. So yeah, so like all contacts cameras, um, the build quality is really good. It's, it has a nice solid feel to it. It feels sturdy. Um, the metal finishing is really nice. Um, yeah, so overall, I really like the way it looks and the way that it handles. Um, as for the image quality, I wouldn't say that it is the best. I mean, yes, it is a Carl Zeiss lens, however, um, as you have seen from some of the photos that I put up earlier, like maybe some of the sides um, of the photos don't look as sharp um, as other cameras that I've used, which are probably cheaper. Um, yeah, I mean, it is pretty sharp in the center. However, in the sides, it is not that sharp. Uh, however, I don't really care that much about sharpness, especially if I'm just going around documenting things. Um, I prefer the look um, of the photo that I get. So that really depends more on the film that I use, um, as well as maybe editing and the scanning. Uh, and I don't know, like some of the blurry sides could be treated as character. <laughs> I mostly shot this camera on program mode, which you do by selecting the kind of like the P symbol at the very front in here. I don't know if you can see that, but I will put a close-up shot maybe in post. But essentially, I just let the camera compute everything um, from aperture as well as um, shutter speed. I mean, during photo walks, I would usually be in f4 and above anyways, so I don't really need it to be on f3.5. Um, chances are I would actually prefer to be an F8 just to make sure that everything is in focus and I wouldn't have to worry about um, getting some misfocus and things like that. Anyways, yeah, so this camera comes with a built-in flash which you can use. Um, I put up a photo earlier where I used the flash to take a selfie. Um, yeah, so that helps in low light situations um, which means like the, the 3.5 to 6.5 aperture is really not that much big of a deal. I actually am okay with the 3.5 on the wider end. Um, that is usually fine for me. Um, especially this camera is more about documentation and usually I would only use larger apertures like f2 and below say if I am doing a portrait shoot um, when I want to have some more subject and background separation. However when I'm just documenting streets or things like that I tend to not need those anyways. Um, yes, yeah, so <laughs> I feel like I'm just like making excuses to say that this camera is good when maybe it's not as good, <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, but this camera is good, I liked it. The focusing is quite good actually. Um, I didn't have any images that were out of focus. Um, and maybe because that's also because I'm mostly shooting like further away from me, like a few meters away. Uh, I haven't really tried to take photos of something close up. Uh, maybe I should, uh, just to see how accurate that um, autofocus is. Uh, yeah, it does have a timer, so if you want to take your own photos or if you want to be in a group photos or things like that, then you can use the timer. What else do I want to talk about? Um, I always had this camera on plus one. Uh, so if you can see in here, I always have that exposure compensation to be on plus one um, just because I'm just always a little bit worried that I am not getting enough light, especially when I'm on like a lower speed ISO film. So I always just have it on plus one. I find that usually that would give me the best uh, exposure 
Um, however, I will use that, like say if my subject is backlit or if there's like a bright source of light in the photos and I don't want it to overpower the rest of the image, then I would make sure to add some more exposure compensation. Yeah, so I didn't show it in any photos in this video so far. However, this camera does come with a panoramic mode. Um, and I believe out of all of the versions for the Contax TVS, it is only the first one that comes with it. And you do it by toggling this um, slider over here. So if you just slide it and then you see the P character, then that means you are on panoramic mode. It also changes the viewfinder. So if you look through it, you're gonna see lines that basically show you where your composition is gonna be in panoramic mode, which I think is really cool. Um, so that's actually one of the reasons why I got the first version of the Context TVS rather than the updated versions, which is supposed to have better functionalities or upgrades. Um, however, those versions do not have the panoramic mode anymore. Um, and yes, I think it is a gimmick. However, it is something that I want to have. Actually, I've already gone out and used this camera to just take um, everything panoramic. Um, so if you want to see that video, do comment. Actually, you will see that video because I'm going to be doing that as my next one. So yeah. All right. So I've been experimenting a lot lately with the types of videos that I've been putting up here on my YouTube channel. And one of the things that I was thinking about was you know, every time I go out and do maybe street photographies and things like that, I don't really want to be bogged down by having to film and take photos at the same time because I think that kind of removes me from the moment and the enjoyment of taking photos. Um, however, I do want to maybe capture some of my process because I get to learn from it. And also I get to share it here on my YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, I guess that's like two birds with one stone. So what I've done is that I've gone ahead and bought an instant 360 camera. Um, this is the One X2. Uh, I got it over to Christmas and I've been playing with it. So you, uh, some of the footages from, I guess, two, three videos that I've put up recently had some footage taken from this camera. Um, it's actually very easy and fun to use, um, but I am still learning and experimenting on how to basically take videos while I take photos as less intrusive as possible to my process because it changes things, right? Like I know some people use GoPro, however, um, I kind of just like to have this 360 uh, camera because then I don't have to think about the composition of the video that's being taken by the, you know, the, the camera. So I just really, dislike it when the GoPro video had like a misaligned horizon. Hey, maybe that's just the perfectionist in me um, that hates to see misaligned horizon. So it is nice to have the 360 video because I can just recompose the shot afterwards. Like I can choose which angle the video is looking at um, and I didn't really have to think about that afterwards, right? Which is, or I didn't have to think about those while the video was being taken. So that's, I think is a plus. Um, yeah, and then, I don't know, like maybe if you like seeing my face, <laughs> um, then I can also put that on the side of the video. However, I do kind of dislike it that when I was editing the video footage using um, Insta360's app, they only have like a one spot where the selfie video appears on the video. It's always like kind of like on the top. I don't know where this is gonna appear, like maybe here or here. It's always on that side of the video, which I kind of would have preferred it if I can change where it appears. And I guess I can do this other thing where I can just like take two videos out of it, one of like kind of like the front POV and then the selfie POV, uh, extract it as two separate video files. And then so later on when I go to Adobe Premiere where I edit most of my footages, then I can just uh, basically put the two videos together and then I can choose where to put the selfie video. However, I felt like that's a little bit too much work and I am a busy person and I still want to have free time. So yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. So yeah, I guess that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, 
please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I post videos every two weeks. I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.